Hey, it's your old pal Lucid Stew again, and this is Stew's News, a review of American high-speed rail happenings over the last month. In this May 2024 episode, we'll take a look at what went down in April. Starting with Brightline West and the biggest news of the month, Brightline West hosted the most expensive game of whack-a-mole in history, starring Mayor Pete Buttigieg himself. Of course, I'm referring to Brightline West's groundbreaking ceremony, which marks the beginning of construction on the 218-mile high-speed rail project through the desert from Rancho Cucamonga, California to just south of the Las Vegas Strip. Before you get too excited, Brightline West still has some funding and regulatory hurdles to surmount on the state level, then they can start construction in the rail right-of-way in earnest. However, they were able to quickly pave a road and parking lot for the ceremony, so we may soon see some movement at sites owned by Brightline West, like the Las Vegas and Victor Valley stations. From the look of Brightline West press releases, preliminary work in the right-of-way may be done, allowing Brightline West to move on to a 100% design state necessary to build. Combine that with Earth Day and you have a perfect opportunity for a Buttigieg full presser. Reiterated many times at the event and in subsequent interviews was the idea that this high-speed rail line aimed to be operational in time for the 2028 Summer Olympics in Los Angeles. Brightline visionary Wes Edens expressed that the company was confident in their construction timeline but capitulated that some parts of the process were out of their hands, such as route validation by the Federal Railroad Administration. That process is years off, but we'll be able to track Brightline West's construction progress and see if their four-year time frame is realistic. Among the many interviews Wes Edens gave related to the groundbreaking ceremony, one stood out where he hinted that he would like to see Metrolink electrify their SB line from Brightline West's Rancho Cucamonga 8th Street Station to Los Angeles Union Station 40 miles west. This would enable one-seat rides from Los Angeles to Las Vegas. Nothing official on the table, but we'll see how that goes in the future. One more thing, we have Brightline West President Sarah Watterson in an interview with Channel 5 KTLA Los Angeles saying that Rancho Cucamonga to Las Vegas would take 1 hour and 50 minutes, which is about 10% faster than previously quoted and an average of nearly 120 miles per hour. With that, we'll move on from Brightline West and check out what's happening with Texas Central. President Biden and Japanese Prime Minister Kishida met in Washington, D.C. during an official diplomatic visit. Among the topics reportedly discussed was Texas Central, which is partially backed by Japanese interests and would use Japanese high-speed rail technology. The leaders of the two countries signaled that they were looking to further strengthen economic ties along many avenues, including technology. Texans Against High Speed Rail came out of the woodwork ahead of the visit to urge the Federal Justice Department to look into Japanese involvement in the project as improper and possibly illegal foreign influence. They have Texas Representative Jake Elzey on their side, and we'll see how that goes. No surprise though, as for years this group has been trying just about anything they can think of to obstruct the project. Around the same time, Texas Rail Advocates held their 2024 Southwestern Rail Conference. Present was Andy Byford, Amtrak's Senior Vice President of High Speed Rail Development. There we heard similar things from Mr. Byford as we've heard in the past. However, in this article, we have an interesting quote. Quote, this is very much a project that Amtrak is now leading. So that is the impact of the Amtrak partnership and the Corridor ID grant Amtrak sponsored that we've talked about in previous Stu's News episodes. That's it for Texas, let's move on to California High Speed Rail. At the April 11th Board of Directors meeting, the California High Speed Rail Authority approved the revised 2024 business plan. It has a few changes from the draft version that jumped out at me, First is a footnote to the ridership estimates. Here they're saying, quote, the ridership model is calibrated using a base year of 2018. So pre-COVID, <laughs> California High Speed Rail Authority, you're precious. 
Another quote change based on the recommendation by the inspector general that they quote include details on timelines of project segments outside of the Merced to Bakersfield project section. They basically shrugged and said they didn't have any. Similarly, the inspector general suggested they include critical target dates for future funding. Their response was that the critical date for funding Merced to Bakersfield is now and then ignored everything else. You can't make this stuff up, but you can't say they're not entertaining. Along the same lines, in an article where San Diego media is getting antsy about when high-speed rail will show up down there, Jim Patrick, the director of communications for the Southern California sector of California high-speed rail, said, quote, Until we see what kind of financial commitment the federal government is willing to make, we can't make official timelines. I read this as saying two things. Number one, they have no idea when it will be done. And number two, the project will not be completed without a federal bailout. Also in that article, Jim Patrick indicated that phase two is so far gone that if and when they ever get around to it again, they're likely going to need to start over on the planning. Back to the board of directors meeting, they approved a request for proposal for train sets. This is the next step in the procurement process. The previous step was the request for qualification, which yielded Alstom and Siemens as the competitors for the contract. The RFP will likely result in a choice between a non-tilt 220 mile per hour version of Alstom's Avelia Liberty and the Siemens American Pioneer 220, which is an American variant of their Valaro Novo design, itself being an iteration of their current Valaro train sets. Most of this is proven technology, although the trajectory of Alstom Avelia Liberties for service with Amtrak on the NEC has not been smooth. They're also wanting the first couple of operable sets for testing by 2028, so the time frame is on the short side. They'll be looking for a Buy American waiver similar to Amtrak and Brightline West, which is moving through their train set procurement with the same two choices in a similar time frame. There is still an outside chance California High Speed Rail and Brightline West could collaborate for a package deal. Last month, we talked about the peer review group recommending doing a study to check the continued viability of the project before proceeding from the Central Valley segment to the rest of Phase 1. A partisan bill to do just that was introduced in the California State Senate and was promptly killed in committee. So much for that idea. California High Speed Rail has released still more renders of potential train interior concepts with a little better texturing. Some of these ideas we've seen before, others are new like these personal workspaces, wheelchair accessible seating, an extremely space inefficient bike rack area, truly enormous toilets. Seriously, how much is the rent on this apartment? And cafe and lounge cars. Not quite party car level on those, but pretty snazzy. Now let's look at the Central Valley progress. Capital outlay budget summary, mediocre at $103.8 million expended, about 5% behind on spending for the year so far. A bit of a lull in construction labor force at 1,247 average daily site workers, down about 250 from last November. Keep in mind these reports are two months behind and these numbers are for February. Risk contingency drawdown not too bad at 39 million and no egregious change orders to speak of. Construction progress unchanged from the prior month. Construction package one earned value chart, schedule performance index of 0.97. They're behind schedule, but not terribly so. It's not a good month, but it's not a bad month. With that, we'll say goodbye to California High Speed Rail, but we'll keep it in California with the High Desert Connector. This is a roughly 50 mile corridor that could eventually link California High Speed Rail and Brightline West through Southern California's High Desert between Palmdale and Victorville. The High Desert Corridor Joint Powers Agency Board of Directors Come on, man! also met on April 11th. A couple of tidbits from that. First, the agency approved a labor coalition agreement, much like we've seen other projects do early in their process. Second was an extension of a contract with Transportation Solutions to consult on the NEPA process through an anticipated record of decision. 
That contract period extends through June of next year, so they're likely anticipating environmental approval around that time. Not much else going on there, let us now check in with Acela and the NEC. Alstom tweeted out their delivery to Amtrak of the 12th Avelia Liberty. No further word on when those will be in service, but you can see the responses have calmed significantly since the resolution of their computer model issues. April saw a hearing about the rehabilitation of the Saugatuck Bridge on the NEC in Westport, Connecticut. This will cost $4 million and should start next year. This is necessary because the replacement of this bridge is not expected to be completed until 2033. MTA announced delays on their Penn Station Access project. This was one of the projects that got FSP NEC grant money last year. As indicated by the name, this project would allow MTA to access Penn Station via the NEC, providing new transit options for New York City. Naturally, MTA blames Amtrak for the current nine month delay. The two agencies are trying to figure out how to get MTA enough uninterrupted time with the right of way to do the necessary work. Now let's look at the NEC Amtrak numbers. Amtrak on the NEC bouncing back from a pretty awful January. Consistent increases across the board, although Acela had a slightly better revenue bump month over month. As mentioned before, Amtrak on the NEC is seasonal and this dip in numbers is normal. Keep in mind, these reports run two months behind as well and this data is from February. Year over year shows the February recovery was not quite as good as it was in fiscal year 2023. Acela is the exception. I have this chart in absolute dollars because last year's operating profit was zero. Revenue was up nicely year over year, however. We've seen a few months here where revenue was up, but operating profit has been sketchy. Why is that? If we look at operating results, revenue is up about 7.5% so far this fiscal year. Expenses are up about 10.6%. That'll make a dent. 89% of that expense increase is coming from salaries, wages, and benefits. Something to think about next time you want to complain about ticket prices on social media. Although depending on where you land on the political spectrum, that could cause you to complain more. With that, we will deboard Acela and depart the NEC. And now it's time for Stu's Boo Boos, where I go over everything I missed last month. While talking about the American High Speed Rail Act, I referred to a group of representatives as quote, Democrat Congress people. This should be Democrat ick Congress people. This is razor close to a grammatical error, but since the group involved is important, I will allow it. That gold star is thanks to Nikon F5 user. That brings the gold star total to 11. Silver stars for a boo-boo free month mired at two. I've been this close the last two months. As always, if you find a boo-boo in this presentation, let me know in the comments. If it's a good one, you win a prize. A big thanks to the Lucid Group Discord channel for their assistance and input. If you'd like to join our motley crew, check out the invite in the description. Plenty more of your favorite channel series on the way. Up next, look for a video about the Pacific Northwest High Speed Rail Corridor coming soon. But that's all for now. Until next time, I'll see you on that big beautiful freeway.